I'm a great fan of Google's Chromebooks. I actually own two of them. They're lightweight versions of Linux running on hardware. They're power efficient, and although they have some limitations, the operating system design provides higher than normal security for users on the internet at very affordable prices. So today, many users can afford a secure operating system that is safe for financial, banking transactions, great for online shopping, and of course more. Due to low-cost hardware and Google's design of the Chromebook operating system, this makes a way for most people to afford a secure and safe environment in a pretty hostile internet. But if you have your hardware, your Chromebook, more than five years, Google eventually is going to send you a message, like you're seeing on the screen now, where they are informing you that they end the support for your hardware. So what do you do about a perfectly working piece of hardware that's no longer safe once support stops? It's not safe to use that operating system anymore. Well, we're going to walk you through converting the firmware, the software that boots the device, to a generic UEFI, and then install our choice of Linux on the hard drive. We're gonna walk you through the conversion of a Lenovo N42-20 Chromebook to elementary OS Linux, step by step. So step one, we're going to begin the process of moving from Chrome OS to recovery mode, and that is going to be using the escape, refresh, and power key. And that's going to move us into what you see on the screen. At this point, we wanna move from recovery mode into developer mode. And we do that once we're in recovery mode, we're gonna use control D and that will start moving us into developer mode. We will get a warning that the OS verification will be turned off. If we hit enter, the system will reboot and local data will be cleared. Let's hit enter. Now your system will reboot and you'll get, you'll get information like you see on the screen showing up and it's going to remove all local data. Now, every time you boot up in developer mode, you're going to get this warning of OS verification is off. That's normal. You're going to have to create a new account. You're also going to see your hardware ID on the screen. That's a very important piece of information. Now, keep in mind, we've wiped out all user data. So we're going to boot our Chromebook back into the Chrome OS, create an account, so that we can log on to the Chrome OS again. We're still now in developer mode. Now, once you've successfully logged on to your Chromebook OS, launch the browser. And once the browser is up, use Control-Alt-T. That's going to launch a command line interface. At the command line, you're going to type shell, S-H-E-L-L. -L. Hit enter. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to type in this series of commands that I have on the screen. You must pay attention to syntax. Make sure if it's uppercase, you follow that. If it's lowercase, you follow that. If there's a semicolon, a space, a dash, syntax is critical. It won't work if you don't get the syntax right. Or you type all this in and you hit enter, it's going to download a file to your Chromebook from Mr. Chromebox.com. Tech. It will run that script on your Chromebook. It will then pop up a menu and do a little inventory of your firmware and then stop and wait your command. The reason I'm having you run this script is we need to find out whether you need to take your Chromebook apart and remove the right protect screw. If you plan on just simply dual booting your Chromebook between Chrome OS and Linux, you don't need to do anything. You're ready to move forward. If you plan on removing Chrome like I was, and I need to get rid of the firmware and replace it with a UEFI replacement, then I'm going to have to get in there if my Chromebook requires it and remove that right protect screw. When this script runs, it's going to tell me whether I need to do that or not. A lot of details are in the video notes. If you go to the video description of this YouTube video, you'll see a link to video notes. You can download it and there's a whole lot of extra, extra information about all of this in detail in those video notes. 
Now here I've ran the script and you can see it identifies my device, the hardware ID. It also identifies the CPU. It identifies my firmware and that's what this is all about right now. We're working on replacing or modifying our firmware. Right now it sees I've got a stock Chrome OS firmware and notice the FWWP indicates disabled. In other words, there's no screw that right protects this firmware. So it's ready to be overwritten and move on. Many step-by-step -step guides on the internet will have you take apart your Chromebook first without checking to see whether it's already disabled. And I advise you to go ahead and run this script to see, do you need to take your Chromebook apart to remove that right protect screw? In my case, it was already gone. So I didn't need to take it apart. It would have been a lot of wasted time and effort taking the Chromebook apart only to find the screw was missing anyway. Now, if you're right protected, you're going to have to go find some steps. There's plenty of websites and even YouTube videos that will help you disassemble your Chromebook and get to that screw, remove that screw. You've got to come back to the same place and then you're going to decide whether you're going to install a UEFI full ROM, which is what I'm going to do, or update your legacy firmware, which is if you want to do a dual boot. You can also set boot options, which I wouldn't. You can set your hardware ID. That would only be if you absolutely needed to do it. And then they have step five on the menu, remove Chrome OS bitmaps, restore Chrome OS bitmaps. So in most cases, if you do a full UEFI update replacement, all that's gonna be gone anyway. If the script runs and it says you're right protected, you're gonna to have to power off at the menu, find the guide to help you disassemble your hardware and remove the screw. And then you've gotta get right back to this menu option so you can proceed further. Here's a couple pictures showing some of these right protect screws. I believe this is a HP. Here's another Chromebook and this is where the location of the right protect screw is. So you'll find a lot of this on the internet. So here you're going to see me type in the command, the to download the file from Mr. Chromebox.tech and I forgot to add the .tech and you'll see it will fail and gives me an error message could not resolve host Mr. Chromebox because I didn't type it in right. The next time I'm gonna type it in, it's gonna be correct and you'll see it run. Okay, we're now downloading the files needed to upgrade or modify, whichever choice you make, the firmware of your device. So it's downloading all the software, getting the menu ready so that you can choose to modify your firmware or replace your firmware. Here's your menu option. In my case, I'm going to choose number two. I'm going to upgrade a full ROM replacement, replace my firmware, put a brand new UEFI firmware in place of Chrome's firmware. And now I can then go ahead and download and install Linux. Now I am speeding this up with video magic. We're going to choose number two and it's warning me. It's giving me all kinds of warnings because you can brick the hardware. Do you want to do a backup? Uh, do you, are you sure you want to do this? And I'm going to go ahead with number two. It's downloading the firmware. It's now getting ready to install that firmware and now it's finished and I need to hit enter. So now it can boot up on the newly installed UEFI firmware. We'll continue booting. You'll see it's going to run some scripts in the background. It's going to be doing some things here. You're eventually going to get to a shell prompt. And at that shell prompt, you can simply type exit and hit enter. You can now boot with your new UEFI and hit the escape key to get into the boot menu. Make sure you have your bootable Linux flash drive inserted and you can just choose the boot menu option, hit enter, and down in the bottom, you'll see your USB flash drive. Just choose that, hit enter, and it will start the installation from the flash drive into memory. You can run Peppermint Linux. Gallium OS is a favorite for Chromebooks. Here I'm installing Elementary OS, which did a really nice job. We would love any comments and feedbacks if we missed a step or we're not clear about a procedure or something that we did. We'd love to hear those that feedback from you in our comment section below. Don't forget our video notes 
found in the video description. That's a free download link. You can download it and a lot of additional information is found in those notes.